This is this is probably one of the last developments that's occurred in Courtney recently. We worked with this developer really well. Um, he did a lot of things for us that we asked for, but we cost them more money than we thought as well. This is part of the old bog, and the bog extends across to the other side of the road, which is Comox, by the way. Um, the road used to swing around here to miss the bog. Okay, full of bogs and everything in time. When we built this road, we went down 12 feet to remove the feet and bring it back up in this area. What's behind you is the natural field where the cows used to roam up to about two, three years ago. So we have a field of the top, so it's still on the land here behind the curb and gutter inside it. The, uh, the problem for the developer is that these are either, it's either putting very shallow crawl spaces or slab on footings because he's got some peat over here. So he's got to get a geotech on every one of these sites. And look at the ground, dig some holes, check out if you go down 12 feet or whatever, bring it back up and build his house foundation. If he's got to go down, he's got to haul all that material away because he can't put it on the site because we want the topsoil left on the site. We don't want it buried under foundation excavations. So we're working at the moment with the developer. The first one has got a three feet crawl space that's out there. He's basically kept the balanced material on site. We're trying to ensure that the, the, the design, which calls for a lot grading plan, we don't know what that is. Basically, on every subdivision now in Courtney, we ask for the four corners of the lot to be staked with an elevation, a minimum habitable floor elevations put on the foundation of the property, so that when the house is built, he's got to stick to those elevations. Here, it's not so critical, it is over here. If this person builds up this lot above the existing ground level, he's going to flood the neighbours at the back because they're on separate systems. The water flows this way across the subdivision out to the ditch on the other side of the excluded material. So this is really critical. So we're working with the developer and we're going to meet him next week, I think, Derek? Yeah. Uh, to try and ensure that what we designed in subdivision, what we put on the drawings, is going to happen on the ground. That's always the crunch, is what happens on the ground. So we've gone from so what to what do we do next? I think the other, I think the other point is that uh, <clears throat> the back half of all these lots, um, the intention is to take the water off the roofs and put it into uh, subsurface galleries in the backyards. And in so doing, uh, recharge locally the, the shallow aquifer. No, that water then drains into a roadside ditch out on McDonald there. There's no curb and gutter on that road. And then across a very shallow graded pipe into the bog on the other side of the road. So the idea is that in small measure at least we can try to maintain the water balance that has uh, historically fed and sustained that bog. And uh, through consultation and uh, agreements with the town of Comox we were able to maintain that pipe across the road. And, allow this water to transfer over there. What is this here? That's an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> that's a low point. That's a storm. That's a catch basin, that's a storm basin. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a custom, that, a custom all, all design. All the requirements that you're, you're, for, you're doing here for rainwater and such um, uh, is within your subdivision control bylaws that you're able to do that. Now. Most of it is. Most of it. Now, from you're going from subdivision through to actually yeah, building, right yeah. what sort of systems are you put in place in order to assure that things aren't lost between there and, and building? If, if, I, if I may, Kevin, no, I just, you have a very good point and Derek asked me to kind of come up and talk about that. And Kevin alluded to, we had the developer on board on what we're trying to achieve over here on as far as lot grading the hundred where we lose it is he the developer sells it to uh, actually John Westbrook who's building over here we don't have a whole lot of hammers or anything in place John happened to be come in here and looking for his building permit and we kind of took him aside and kind of said, John <laughs> this is what we're trying to achieve we talked to him told him what we and he's He's built that house and he's building this house and we've done the soft sell approach and said would you buy into it and so far Craig was here we all talked to him and he's been on board he we're trying to get some 
some some policy in place, something for the builder that doesn't want to buy into that. Because if he doesn't want to put the 100 millimeters on soil we have in the OCP, that's our only um, policy at the moment yeah. on that. Lot gratings, we don't have any policy on that either. But we're doing the soft sell, a little bit of honey uh, at the moment, uh, far more than the big stick. Okay, if I, I, maybe I can just jump in here. Yeah. This is an ideal time uh, to use this as a segue into session two in, in October. Because what Sandy's talking about and where we have a gap here, that Richard brought up, is what tools do we have and how can we apply those tools? And we're still in the process of trying to develop those tools right now. And, and maybe just as a, a sidebar here, we have a meeting coming up um, on the 30th of September, which is a municipalities meeting. And we've been trying this sort of thing over the last year or two, I guess now, where we're exchanging information and ideas between municipalities. Some of us are doing things right, others haven't quite got it right. But regardless, it gives us an opportunity to talk amongst ourselves and then work as if we have an increased resource base. So it's a learning process, an information exchange process. And one of the things that we are focusing on right now is tools. Who has tools in place? What tools do we need? How do we get those tools developed? So, great point. Just add on as what well, these two guys were saying as well, I know we've got one building inspector in the audience. We want to get more building inspectors coming with us. We have a gap between the design, the construction of the subdivision, the development being finished, and now the builder wants to build. So we have an issue there in terms of what we conceive to happen actually happening on the ground. So we are looking at building inspectors doing more than just inspecting plumbing and buildings. From now on. We want to be more involved in making sure that all the thoughts we have involved at the front end of that process, not the back end, not when the building's going to be built, right at the subdivision stage, what we want to achieve so that if they come out and they see the guy burying the topsoil, stop. If they see him um, taking material away, stop. In other words, it's more than just the building going up. The way I look at it, in my little naive world of simplicity, is that the building permit is for the site. The site needs to be managed. Houses being built, we all know they can build them. What we want is the site to be managed. Right now, that's a big gap in our process. We need to fix it. 